Okay, we're back after that nice break here from Knowledge. We're here in Las Vegas at the Aria Hotel. This is ServiceNow's big customer conference. About 4,000 uh, folks here, mostly customers. Most of the content at this event comes from customers. It's practitioners talking to practitioners, which is quite rare actually at these conferences. Uh, I'm Dave Vellante, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm with Wikibon.org. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. We go to these events, we extract the signal from the noise. We love to bring you tech athletes, and Fred Luddy is here. He is a tech athlete. He's the founder of ServiceNow. He started this platform around 2003. Fred, welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much. So we really want to hear the story, you know, but we've been asked to sort of hold that off because we've got another segment with you tomorrow. <laughs> but I just, I have to ask you, I mean, Seeing how uh, this conference and ServiceNow as an organization has grown, you just must be so thrilled, in particular, with the customer enthusiasm. Well, you know, fundamentally I've got a personality flaw, and uh, I call it a kindergarten mentality. I want to see my art on their refrigerator, and the only way you can do that is by making somebody happy. And so to see these people here with the excitement, the enthusiasm, and uh, the smiles on their faces, uh, really is satisfying that kindergarten mentality. So the cakes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. It's all good stuff, we were talking about that earlier. Jeff had not seen the cakes before and was, uh, was quite amazed. <laughs> so, I think that's an industry first, actually. <laughs> Could well be. Yeah, so, um, you guys had some announcements today. Uh, you know, it's, if, if you're going to transform an organization, you got to have mobile. I mean, the whole world's going mobile, and five billion devices and, and, and growing. Um, What'd you guys announce today? Well, we announced the ability to run all of our applications on the iPad. And, um, you know, I think people's reasonable expectations these days are that they should be able to manage anything, anywhere, anytime, using the, the device that they currently have. Now, I, I like to think of an iPad as something that you use when uh, you're pretending to be attending a meeting, <laughs> or when you're pretending to be watching TV with your family. And when you, are pretending to do that, it'd be nice if very efficiently and very effectively you could manage whatever you needed to manage to get your job done. And so today what we've announced is the ability to run everything that ServiceNow has on that iPad. Yeah, I mean it seems to, mobile is basically a fundamental delivery model and maybe even the main delivery model going forward, wouldn't it be? I think it will be a main delivery model and it, it, it's, a, it's a user interface that, that requires complete rethinking about how you're going to do things. You know, for the longest time we, we looked at uh, screens with uh, 24 by 80s, you know, these, these character screens and then we got big pixeled monitors and then we got bigger pixeled monitors and we got very accurate mouses and everything got small and you got hovers and you got, you know, this massive amount of data, and now the form factor is completely shrunk, and you're looking at this as my major input device. So how am I going to get, you know, everything I used to do with a mouse, where I'm hovering over things to see what they do, or I'm touching, you know, 16 by 16 pixels, which you, by the way, you can't hit with your fingernail. Um, how am I going to get all of that stuff, how am I going to be able to work with all that stuff using only my thumb or thumbs? So how are you specifically taking advantage of that smaller form factor and you know, the feature sets that you see in things like iPads? Well, I, I think it's a matter of rethinking. So we're trying to get the user to be, to be able to accomplish their task by doing considerably less work. And one of the things that our, our, our system is actually very comprehensive, it's very big. And we create in, in the browser, in our first user interface, it was really created in 2005, um, we treat all the elements of the system equally. So now, what we've done in the, in, in the mobile, which I think is very unique, it, I, MySpace, I mean, Facebook doesn't have this, uh, LinkedIn doesn't have this, we know exactly what you do as a user, and we remember those things that you do repetitively. And so we're able to create shortcuts, or we're able to, to, to remember, the system's able to remember what you do, and then very quickly present you back with those tasks which are repetitive. So we're trying to, simultaneously compress the information and reduce the interactions. Yeah, so that doesn't sound trivial. Um, it sounds like there's some secret sauce behind that. Um, talk it, about that a little bit. Well, it's not trivial and it's, uh, there, there is secret sauce, um, but it, does, it just requires you to rethink. And for me, you know, if you, uh, if you read the Jobs biography, there are a couple of interesting things in there. Number one, when he met Dr. Land, they had both uh, uh, agreed that everything that had been invented it was going to be invented had already been invented, right? The other thing that they um, 
that they pretty much agreed on, or what, what Job said and a quote that I've used for years is that great artists copy, good artists copy, and great artists steal. <laughs> and I've been a thief all my life. <laughs> I just, I'm going to admit it right here, right, right, on, right on camera, live. Um, and so what we do is we go out and take a look at who's doing this great. Amazon's doing it great. Zappos is doing it great. Asana's doing it great. You know, we, and, and we capture those ideas and then what they meant by great artists steal is that you take them and you reformulate them for the task that you're trying to solve, for the problem that you're trying to solve. And the, the artist won't, they probably, the original artist probably won't even recognize that as their work, but yet they're, they're deeply inspirational to us. So do you fancy yourself as a bit of an artist? Well, I think it's interesting. I was watching the Bellagio fountains uh, down, down the road. And um, you know, to create something like that, if you think about the physics, and the art that had to go into that uh, to create that beautiful masterpiece. You know, it's not just a painting, right? Think about the physics that goes on to shoot something, seven, water 700 feet in the air and then cut it off instantly and have that all choreographed. I mean, it's phenomenal amount of engineering, but it took also a phenomenal amount of art just to make that interesting so that we, would st we actually stood there in rapt amazement of, you know, look how all this is choreographed. So yes, I do. In yeah. fact, I don't think I take exception to the term engineering, software engineering. I don't think, we, we haven't progressed to the point where we, this is an engineering. This is, it, this is an art, this is a craft. You know, it's something that people practice and we try to get better at it and better at it and better at it. But I don't think it's anywhere near an, an engineering discipline. The yeah. other, I was going to follow up, the other interesting from the Jobs book that I never really got until I read the book was like the iPod Shuffle. Because when I first saw the iPod Shuffle, I'm like, you can't do anything. You can't manage your playlists on it. You, all you can do is change songs. I don't get it. And then in reading the book, as you just said, you know, what is what is it you're trying to accomplish with that form factor? Right. And don't just automatically try to replicate what you can do in one form factor to another form factor, but really rethink what's that application. And it sounds like you're kind of taking advantage of that opportunity as you take the app to the mobile space and to the iPad specifically to rethink what is the best use case for that platform? That's right, and as, as you'll see tomorrow, the iPad was really the inspirational first step that we're taking toward a totally mobile app. And just like the Apple um, evolution of building all of this no wonderful new capabilities into iOS and then bringing them back into OS X, we're going to be doing the same thing. So you'll see tomorrow on stage, not only an, an iPad app, but you will see a native iOS app running, and you'll see that it does even more things than the iPad app does, and much faster. Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a wonderful user experience, and um, those those notions will be also coming back into the browser, et cetera. The same way that Apple's been bringing uh, a lot of the capabilities of iOS back onto OS X. I was talking to an IT practitioner last month at a large grocer, and I asked him, what's your What's your biggest challenge? What excites you the most? And he said the same thing. And he said both. What's my biggest challenge is embracing all this pressure from my users for mobile, and that's what excites me the most because I'm a mobile addict. I got you know he pulls out all his devices. So how do you see this announcement within your user base changing, you know, the lives of, of IT pros? Well, it'll you know. Technology since the dawn of time has been used really for two things. It's been, it's been used to streamline, make, make tasks more efficient and more streamlined, and it's been used to create business differentiators. And so our, our product really is about process and moving process through an organization. And so we want to streamline that as much as possible. So if I can, we, we do things like change management. Change management has multiple levels of approval. If I can get it to the point where a manager can pull his phone out of his pocket and do five approvals between meetings, he's become significantly more efficient, right? The changes are going to be done in a, in a more timely fashion and the bottom line improves. It's as simple as that. You know, it's interesting. We were, uh, those of you watching know, we were earlier today broadcasting from SAP Sapphire event. And if you go to Sapphire, you hear two, you get huge doses of two things. One is HANA, of course, which is their in-memory database. Uh, but the other is mobile. Mm -hmm. It's all you hear, and, and it's interesting to hear you guys talk about the ERP of, of IT, mm -hmm. and you hear SAP, you know, the poster child for ERP, and all their customers are going to mobile, whether it's retail, manufacturing, you know, across the supply chain. 
And so it sounds like you've got a sort of similar mentality, but more focused obviously with, within IT, but of course now you're also branching beyond IT. Do you see your mobile app uh, uh, push going beyond the IT community? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our underlying all of our applications, we have a platform that's a, uh, it's a forms-based workflow platform that's really uh, purpose-built for something that, that we would characterize as a service, uh, service relationship management. So pretty much any request, response, uh, fulfillment type workflow can be handled by our platform. And what our customers have done over the years is create different applications that help them uh, streamline that workflow. Typically that workflow is handled by by people creating a spreadsheet, emailing it to somebody else, having it emailed back. Perhaps they built a Lotus Notes app. But yes, everything that, that, that our, or I will say that um, our platform usage has been expanded by our customers, sometimes beyond our, our wildest dreams. And, and we're, we're, we love it. So you talk about you know, some of the greatest artists were, were stole, right? <laughs> and so now you guys put up this platform. Uh, I've said a number of times today, it's not trivial to, to actually get a CMDB working in the way that you wanted to get it to work. So now you've had this platform out for quite some time, your success has started to, you know, you get a lot of press, people are starting to see it. Do you worry sometimes that people are going to say, okay, I can do that too, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, rip it off. What gives you confidence that you can stay ahead of those, those thieves out there? Well, uh, I have great confidence in that, you know, we have a very broad base of applications that are very deep in functionality but it, that's really something that you want to happen. <laughs> because <laughs> you want some young people with fresh new ideas to try to, uh, to unseat you. Because they will come at, the, come at this from a completely different perspective and a completely different angle. And they will do things that you never thought of. And so the race is then on, are they going to become more relevant than me? Or am I going to be inspired by their ideas, incorporate them into our platform, and stay ahead of them. So you welcome that? Oh, I absolutely welcome that. <laughs> you know, we, we wouldn't be where we are today if, uh, if uh, Edison and Bell weren't, weren't the Jobs and Gates of their time. I mean, they had just, and, and I think Jobs and Gates as well, right? They had this great rivalry that really caused technology to move ahead a lot faster than when it was just IBM selling mainframes. And so, you need those rivalries. You need that. You need that competition. You know, I'm I'm watching these young guys from Asana. It's a great little platform for, for for tasking. And uh, you know, they came out of Facebook. They have a very Facebook mentality, and they have phenomenal ideas. And believe me, guys from Asana, I'm watching you. <laughs> you. Those are just that's where great ideas come from. Well, we always like I say, we love sports analogies here in the Cube. And you know, Jeff, your kids are into sports as are mine, and you always want to see them play that more competitive, you know, environment. It sounds like Fred, you have the same philosophy. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, excellent. All right, Fred. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming by. Now you come back. Fred's going to be back again tomorrow. We're going to go through the story of service now. That's why we really didn't touch up on it in any kind of detail today, but. but but, but, but Fred actually started the company. We'll give him a little preview, Fred. So you started the company really not to go solve an IT service management problem, right? You came up with this sort of idea, this platform, and, and then you, you, that was really the first application that you developed, right? Give us a little tidbit well, of what we're going to Well, we can even back up a step yeah. before that. Oh, great. You see, I've been a programmer now for 40 years. Every day I wake up, that's all I really want to do. <laughs> Why do I program? Because I want somebody to take a look at the technology that I built and say, hey, that's pretty helpful. I like that. I can use that. I'm going to put that in my fridge. On fridge. I want it on the fridge. <laughs> so, the, the real strategy behind the company was to build some software that somebody wanted that hopefully they would pay me so I could build more software. <laughs> that was the entire strategy. And so, uh, you know, on one hand, I love technology, and on the other hand, it really irritates me when it makes me feel stupid or it makes other people feel stupid. So, what I wanted to do was to create an enterprise platform that people could use and they would feel empowered, they could walk up and use it like they walk up and use an ATM, like they walk up and buy something on it from Amazon, et cetera. So a completely you know, consumerized uh, thought process. And then that was the thought process really in 03 and 04. And then what we do really uh, figured out was that a platform is a very hard sale. You know, it's tough to convince somebody that they should take this. It'd be like selling you an Intel processor yeah. Yeah. and telling you you can do anything you want with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go for it. Right, they exactly. Want they, they, want, they want to solve a business problem. Right. And um, 
So we, do, we decided to go after the ITSM space first. It was a space that uh, was very underserved, very lucrative, and, and growing significantly. Yeah, amazing. So, so join us tomorrow, we're going to have Fred back on and we're going to really hear the story, uh, the founding story of, of ServiceNow and how we got to where we are today. So Fred, thanks very much for coming on and sharing the news. And I'm going to uh, change it all by tomorrow. Uh, right? good. Whatever you heard today. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's, okay. That's called a tease. <laughs> all right, so, uh, so keep it right there. We'll be uh, up next. We've got uh, Douglas Leone coming on. He's the partner at Sequoia Capital and, uh, and, and one of the better known VCs out in the valley. So, so keep it right there. We'll be back with Doug just in a minute. Uh, this is ServiceNow. This is theCUBE. This is knowledge. Right back. <laughs>